Yes, welcome back to Teach Me Please, uh, brought to you by Dylan Friends. Actually, that's not true. It's Dylan Friends. Welcome back to Dylan Friends. You're listening to Teach Me Please, brought to you by our beautiful friends at Deakin University. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I've been very much looking forward to this one, and so has Darcy. We're both... Oh, look, I don't want to put us in the same boat here, Darcy, but I've been in I've been in a good paddock. I'm, I've got a winter shed, a winter coat on. I'm a dad. And that whole thing around dad bod, I thought it was a joke. It's actually a thing. I didn't realise it actually happened. You just sort of get a bit loose. Anyway, let's get into the show today. Uh, please welcome... Dom Kondo. Dom, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. We're having fun already. We've been laughing. We have. Yeah, <laughs> <now>. we have. <laughs> I don't know what about. Yeah. Hey, Dom, welcome to the pod. Um, have you ever listened to Teach Me Please before? Are you aware of the show? I am aware of the show. I am, yeah. And I mean, especially working at Deakin, I mean, we know about the show and I've listened to you many times. So oh excited. God. Well, you know, the last time I asked someone if they're a fan of the show, they lied, right? I asked Nathan Buckley. and I, um, uh, No, sorry. I asked Luke Hodge. I was like, mate, you like the show? Like, you're a fan of the show? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what's your favourite episode? He's like, oh, Nathan Buckley. And I was like, haven't had him on. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, I'm wary of asking you if you've actually... Okay, I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to ask. But I love it. It's great. great. Yeah, good, good, good. (laughs) Hey, um, for those of the people out there who don't know you, I'm sure a lot do. They might be sleeping under a rock or they're not, you know, reading the newspapers and those sort of things. What, uh, who are you? What do you do? And what's your shtick? Yeah, well, I'm a sports dietitian. Um, I work at Deakin Uni um, and I work at Richmond Footy Club. So they're my two sort of professional um, lives, I guess. Um, two very different worlds. But yeah, I do teach and research at Deakin and then at Tigers I look after um, nutrition and sports science um, across the club. Um, I guess that's a bit about me here. But originally from Adelaide, did all my study in Adelaide. My whole family's in Adelaide. I'm Italian background. Where would you study in Adelaide? What? Um, I was at Adelaide Uni for yep. my undergrad, um, Flinders Uni for my Masters of Dietetics, and then back to Adelaide for my PhD. Wow, PhD. Mm. PhD is a funny one. Like, yeah. I don't know if you grew up, well, we definitely did grow up in the same sort of time, but PhD, I remember, was like pure hard dance. Yeah. You remember that? Like, so <laughs> yep. this shows you my level of education, but when people used to say, I'm doing a PhD, I was like, <laughs> are you like, what, like shuffling or yeah. like <laughs> dancing in like the alleyways or something like that? <laughs> Anyway, um, incredible uh, resume that you've got and doing awesome things. And I know the success of uh, the players in Richmond and I know how much they love you there as well, which is a hard one because, I, as we mentioned earlier, I had to tell you, you had no idea about who I was. But um, well, former, I sort of did, a former, bit. former great <laughs> sort of player. And I must say I've had some interesting relationships with dietitians over my journey, not because of the conflict, but just around – it is a really challenging thing to learn. Like yeah. it's a, it's a it's a space where there is so many opinions, or you hear so many things. You know, we we're already talking off air before about mm-hmm. funny fads and diets, which we'll touch yeah. on today, and how to have a, a balanced diet, which was you know what diet again. We we'll even talk about that word, mm. but it is such a, a contrary thing, and you just got to work out what's best for you, work out what's best yeah. for the individual, which. Hopefully today we can get a little bit closer to. Yeah, awesome. Now, absolutely, it is it is challenging. I think, as you said, I mean, everyone eats, right? And so everyone has an opinion of what works for them. Um, and nutrition science is such a new area. It's one of the fastest growing areas of science. And by that, I mean the evidence behind why we recommend what we recommend. But it's relatively new. And so because of that, things change a lot. Mm. And um, it's frustrating for everybody. But... You know, as the evidence builds and emerges, we learn more and more, um, very different to some other sciences that have been around for, for much longer. And so, you know, we just, things need to evolve and change, but understandably it can get frustrating and then people sometimes lose faith in nutrition because well, one minute they told us this, now they're telling us this, I'll just go and follow whatever or listen to whoever. So it is challenging, but hopefully, you know, working with people, getting to know them, getting to know what might work for them, you just need to adjust what you know is is evidence base around who you're working with really 100 it's it's such a, a journey and i know for me like i feel genuinely i know i was joking before about the dad bod thing and, and that is that is true but in the sense of like energy feeling good mm. um knowing what i'm putting into my body i feel like i actually am eating and fueling myself the best i probably have in my whole life at the moment even though as i said before just being a young father but working out what's best for me like a little bit of a journey on myself um in my eating like i reckon when i was 
playing footy, I was always a little bit, I really struggled to put on muscle mass, which is, you know, a lot of young men try and yep. do, and we'll talk about today yep. how to do that in a, in a good way. But I struggled so much mm. like doing that. So I was always on these hectic diets of like seven meals a day and like just yep. eating so much, like to the point is disgusting, but like I would nearly make myself sick eating so much. Yeah. And it was just, it was, it was hard. So by the end of my career, I had the most unhealthy relationship with food where it was actually like a job eating yep. to keep the, the muscle on. So by the end of it, I was like, fuck this. I'm so over eating. Like I, I got really sick of meat and I went sort of like vegetarian Yeah, yeah, yeah. for a while um, and still have a very plant-based diet to this day. Yeah, awesome. um, and now just starting to introduce sort of like proteins back in. Like I eat a lot of, I, I ate salmon and, and fish. So I was more pescatarian. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, eating a lot more sort of, um, red meat now as well and, mm. and mixing in with chicken but it's sort of one of those ones like i don't eat uh protein really at home it's only when i'm out when you're so out I cook, yep. cook sort of vegetarian stuff at home and then yeah, yeah not awesome. that you asked but i thought i'd let no, you know that's awesome. yeah. yeah great <laughs> yeah. Like, this is a fantastic story <laughs> yeah that's a good story uh, but it's true though like what you said around um you know when you're trying to gain size and it becomes such a chore and we often think like oh gosh like you know people that complain about like okay, they can eat whatever and it, it, you know they can't put on weight that's actually just as um i guess can be just as detrimental with your relationship to food as what not being able to sort of lose weight and having a really horrible relationship the other way mm as well i mean it goes both ways and it is difficult when you consistently have to eat for your job to gain size and you just it's just not happening mm. um it's um it's not fun like talking to like the players that obviously a lot of them need to do that and it's just it's an it's an absolute pain it's a job yeah it's a it's a and I, I'm, I'm not saying there's either like you said there's no yeah and players, i'm like oh shut up mate just I'm like, i know <laughs> and it was look, eat a bit more shut eat up. a bit more just just and you're like i'm trying yeah. like it's fucking hard to run around with this <laughs> in my stomach but no it's um both ways and i suppose today like we'll talk sort of broadly to um anyone listening about just you know i suppose a generic not generic but a sort of wider base just healthy eating plan and and how maybe people can sort of benefit their their lifestyles a little bit differently 100 percent. but the thing is though that like and this is just human this is why human behavior is so fascinating mm. and nutrition is never just i'm just eating for a purpose there's so much emotional social yeah. aspects that come into it because you're 100 percent right if you just actually made some small changes that are sustainable and lifestyle based you would get your results but that's not sexy that gets boring you get over it you know and so people want fast results people want to be like i'm sticking to this and i can do that for a certain period of time um it's just it's fascinating and that's why mm. Fad diets are so popular and they continue. How long have fad diets been around for? Like, year, like you know, and there's always a new one and they'll succeed and it be, and then, and then it, you know, it sort of leads, something else comes in. No one just wants to stick to like the basics mm. because it's just not interesting, right? It's not the way we're wired. It's funny as well. Like when I do say to myself, you know what, I'm going to eat really clean this month. That's when I go, oh, you know, I actually feel like dessert now. Yeah, yeah. Like, whereas I wouldn't have never had it before that. So Absolutely. I think, you know, from, uh, I probably should have mentioned this earlier. I've had, a, I'm really lucky because my wife is also yeah. um, a dietitian and she's been really incredible on this journey for both of us. We, I feel like, you know, I'm really lucky with what we get to eat at home because she, she cooks incredible food. So um, I'm really lucky to, to do that. And I suppose, yeah, passing on some awesome information today from yourself would be, would be really, really, really cool. Where do you reckon we start? Like, how to fuel your body? Like, what, what's the 101 of how to have a healthy, balanced um, lifestyle with food? Yeah, I think probably there, like, if we talk about the main things around fueling, but then also some of the main macronutrients that we need to focus on. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, micronutrients are important too, but maybe just starting on what those things are and what we actually might need. Yes. And I know what they are, but you yeah? should you should talk about them. You, well, yeah. well, well uh, what are they? Wow. Tell us. So, what was the the main what? The main macronutrients. The main macronutrients are protein. Yeah. Carbohydrates. Yep. Good fats. Bad fats, or is it just trans fats? Is it trans fats? I remember that from health. <laughs> is that a thing? Trans fats. Trans fats is a thing, but trans fats essentially is bad fat for a better way. So that's that's probably the one that we definitely we want to like avoid. That. We don't like yeah. that. Yeah. But I guess whether it's good or bad fat, it's fat. Fat gives yeah. is a macronutrient. Okay, so, so protein, carbohydrate, fat and 
That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that's it, right? Um, and so those three macronutrients, the reason why we call them macronutrients is because that, what, that, that's what's found in the largest amounts in our food. Yep. Um, and that's what gives us energy. So those three um, macronutrients have a calorie content associated with them, right? So that's where we get our main fuel from. Fuel is energy, essentially. Um, so... Firstly, I think it's so important to make sure that we're actually eating what we need to have enough energy to do what we want to do in a day. Yes. Um, so many people under eat, right? And when you mentioned before about these challenges, the amount of challenges I've seen, like gym challenges, like I'm a gym junkie, I love going to the gym, but it, you know, you walk in the doors and there's like, join our eight week challenge and get a nutrition plan. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. Yeah. Let's see what this plan is. Um, you know, and it will sometimes be like a thousand calorie a day plan. Who is that actually going to sustain? Like it's complete crap and you do it again and you'll lose weight in the first week or two and the reason is because you're not actually like you're, you're not eating enough carbohydrate it's a lot of water weight right which we'll talk about in a minute so you lose that initial water weight um, but what happens is that because you're under eating for the amount of energy that you actually need your metabolism slows down because it's a stress on the body so your body thinks shit I'm not getting in the energy I just need to survive let alone now I may be doing the challenges that you're doing as well so it's slows down metabolic rate in order to make the most out of the food that you are eating, right? So it says, well, if I'm only eating a thousand calories, I'll make sure that I can live on that. So let's mm. slow things down. So you do that and then weight plateaus. And then you think, well, shit, how can I, how much more can you actually reduce? So you reduce a bit more, you might see a bit more weight loss. And then you hit a point where it's like, I'm starving. I can't keep doing this. The weight's not coming off anymore. My, my challenge is almost over. I'm over it. I'm just going to, let's just eat again. But you're now eating again at a much lower metabolic rate. So what happens? Weight comes back on more quickly and then you actually start at a higher weight than what you probably started at over the next couple of months. And that cycle is just that diet cycle that continues and continues and continues. That was incredibly explained. Well done. Oh, thank you. Because, no, no, that is like (laughs) even I was like on that journey. It is so interesting. Like that's so good how you've put it because can you talk about – the point where like we all have a certain amount of calories yeah. that we want to have in a day yeah. and i think that will if people maybe don't know that yeah then that will completely make sense because we all have x amount of calories right absolutely and if you're eating way less i'm just gonna let you do it yeah. because I'm, I'm with you but let's yeah, just no, absolutely so yeah. um it's cool like our basal metabolic rate yeah. and it's essentially what we need every day to survive yeah and that's from things like your heart beating your respiratory rate your digestive system females reproductive systems everything that actually is just to live just to live we burn x calories yes yeah. now that will vary for everybody right it, it, it changes between size you know so a bigger person has a high metabolic rate makes sense they probably need more energy to survive um you know normally men than women have a high metabolic rate probably for the same reason age changes as we get older it reduces over time um you know different um uh ethnic change uh, differences as well so different factors come into that metabolic rate um the more active you are too the higher your metabolic rate will be at rest because you've got more muscle mass right mm-hmm. which we'll talk about in a minute that's why it's important to actually do like train as well muscle mass wise as we get older for that metabolic rate but essentially different things impact that it might range anywhere you know as an estimate from adults between you know 12 1400 calories a day up to three thousand three and a half thousand calories mm. a day depending on who you are and what you do yeah. um the way that you test it you can get you know um a resting metabolic rate test done different sort of places do that mm. um, um and you know we do it a lot at deacon as well with our research and so you get that number and then you just know that's what i actually need to survive the amount of people, again, that eat less than that is quite remarkable. Because what you were saying before around, you know, like dropping that to a 1,000 calories, where yeah. say someone's at 3,000 for the yeah. sake of the argument, they're eating a 1,000, then it drops, and then yeah. bang, the weight comes back yeah. on. So it's almost like the most important thing is sort of identifying where your, I don't know what the, uh, like... Your metabolic, your metabolic your rate ma- is. Metabolic rate is. And to consistently maintain, like yeah. eat to that, 
But then consistently, if you do want to like drop weight or get fitter, it's yeah. like just eat under that, but consistently. Yeah. yeah. And so what we have to also remember is, is that's just the energy to Oh, true. Because then you go to the gym. And, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then anything above that, um, that you're actually doing physically, uh, physical activity wise, that's a big variation mm. of what people, you know, ha- are. But, you know, you obviously want to fuel for, for what you're doing. But if you're someone that's like, I'm exercising, but I'm exercising too lose weight and that's that's the case for some people and yep. that's okay then you need to be in an energy deficit but you definitely have to eat somewhere between your basal metabolic rate and the amount you're actually burning you can't in a eat day. just under that because no. that's when the it drops absolutely and you know not everyone can go and get these tests done they're not that cheap they're a bit inconvenient you got to get them done first thing in the morning and blah 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 but there are equations out there like estimate estimated um equations that you can at least have a ballpark mm. um you know here in australia we use the schofield equation so you can go Google that. They've got calculators on the net. You can at least just see what would I be burning? What would my BMR be? My basal metabolic rate, and then what I, what might I be burning in a day? And just get an indication. It might actually surprise you of how high it actually high is. is. Yeah. So many of us don't eat the amount that we should. Um, and that's also interesting. Like when you said before about not being able to gain muscle mass. Often, you know, um, because I'll have access to some of these. Um, tools um you know we might put athletes through um uh, uh their their testing and say that you know gee you, you are burning two and a half three thousand calories a day at rest you're an elite athlete you're probably burning three thousand calories a day training are you actually eating seven thousand calories a day mm. Probably not. How realistic is it? Well, we have to then think about what that looks like. But like, just so you understand, the reason why you're not gaining size or mass is nothing about. It's just because you've got really high metabolism, and so, you know, sometimes it just makes them click. Like, okay, so I actually yeah. need to. Like, I should need to be up there, which is bloody hard to yeah. get that amount. So, um, so that's imp- like that's important as a starting point to, to fuel fuel yourself properly for what your lifestyle actually is because you won't you won't if your goal is to lose weight or get a bit leaner or increase muscle mass you won't do it unless you have an in- a good indication of what that is. Really, really interesting. If is there? Do you suggest like I've tried this before and it personally wasn't for me like calorie counting or tracking yeah. food. It was really difficult to do, but I, I feel like. If you want to do that, that you need to have a basic. You do need to probably educate yourself a little bit on it. So, yeah. is, is there a way that you suggest maybe doing that? Yeah, how would you do that if you yeah. don't want to count calories? And but yeah, you yeah, absolutely. I I'm not a yeah. I'm not a fan of calorie counting either. Like to the point of being like, oh, I've got you know. 1200 calories I want to eat a day yeah. and I'm going to Well, there's those apps as well, right? That, right? Yeah, yeah, I've tried that and I was just like, this is... Oh, and it's just, I like, you need to make sure that you've got a good relationship with food for yeah. so many reasons. Um, well, it's tasty. Yeah, right, absolutely. Well, it is, you know, and you want to, like, you want to enjoy it. Like, you don't want to be like, oh, fuck, I'm eating this because of this and it becomes a chore and that's yeah. when I say it becomes a job. Like, yeah. food is really fun absolutely and it and it should be enjoyed mm. um it doesn't mean that you don't need to just be aware of what you're eating and want to be health conscious and that's okay but it shouldn't go to that extreme where you can't you know have that extra bit of something that you feel like because it's uh you know 10 calories over what you should mm. be like that's where it gets ridiculous but i do think if you're going on this journey and just really don't know about food and don't even know how much something might have in it or what what it's made of there's no harm in saying okay for a week i'm just going to track. use one of these apps and, and track and, and but just to get an indication of, <laughs> yeah. of like an education piece but know that it's not because you need to be under something or over something just learning if i eat the way i normally do where am i at yep. um and again there's so many great apps out there that can do that um but as far as doing it ongoing nah i would be i'm not a fan yeah i like that i, I think it's a really cool piece just to get a good understanding of where you are where you need to get to and then yeah. um and go from there. Yeah. Could we break down um, what carbohydrates, proteins, and fats actually do in the body? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So when we're talking about fuel and energy, uh, well, fuel, like that, that is carbs job, right? So carbohydrates are our primary fuel source. It's essentially what your body prefers to use to do everything that it does. Yep. So that's like, you know, your rices, your breads, yep. uh, 
That's yep. the only two I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Pasta. Uh, pasta. Yeah, yeah. So you grain food. Grains. Um, yep. If we're talking about our food groups, you know, the the grain food groups is the biggest source of carbs. Yeah. Um. So yeah, everything that you've mentioned. In you there. would know this as well. Being obviously, I'm sure everyone that is around you do you like go and buy that like super fucking bread that's like brown it's got like every fucking seed in it that were like i'm just like just i just want like a white, white bread, bread sandwich <laughs> one day and like i i feel like i'm a bird like i'm eating like seeds just that's all i eat yeah because <laughs> and that's a good point to bring up and yeah. that is me too okay. um but you know there's different sorts of carbohydrate which yeah. I'll, I'll touch on in a minute as well very different source um you know from a processing perspective and what they do in the body as well but so, so you've got all your grain foods. We often forget, like when people say, oh, I'm on a low-carb diet, and then you're like, oh, yeah, what are you eating? And then they're like, well, I'm not eating bread, but, you know, I'm eating I'm eating fruit and I'm eating, uh, uh, you know, yogurt and milk and I'm eating sweet potato and beans. Well, they're all carbs, right? So so they're all about other carb foods, mm-hmm. right? So um, fruit is, is carb. Um, dairy products, excluding cheese, is carb. And then our starchy veggies, right? Potato, sweet potato, corn, legumes are all carb. Um, and then you've also, also got your sugar foods. So, you know, things like your lollies and your cakes and your chips, that's all carbohydrate too. Mm-hmm. So think of carbs as being, um, and tell me if I'm getting too simple here, but but it is sugar. Yep. So the body breaks it down to sugar and, and the more- Glucogen. Um, glycogen, yep. We store it as glycogen, but breaks it down to glucose. <laughs> hey, you combine sort of glucose, which is what is in like the blood with the I was like just speeding the, the process store. up. I was speeding the process up. <laughs> I like that one though. That's a good glucogen. Um, yeah, so it's sugar, all like molecules that essentially join together. The yep. more complex they are, you get all different structures, but we break it down to sugar, right? Um, and, and that's what we use um, as our energy source. So, And it's the only nutrient that can actually pass a blood-brain barrier as well. So the brain uses carbon carbohydrates too which is why if you haven't eaten if you skip lunch you might get to two three o'clock and be like geez i'm can't concentrate dizzy. here dizzy yep. lightheaded or when exercising and you run out of yep. that energy and yep you that, that's when you're chewing up your muscle your protein absolutely yep good yeah good yeah, okay. <laughs> Back, saved it saved it <laughs> saved it okay. um so that that's car's primary fuel source we have different sorts we've got more of our so there's a low gi carbohydrate glycemic in, index and high gi that essentially means how quickly the sugar is digested so carbohydrates with a low gi all your bird foods like more things with more grains yep. more fiber like brown, brown products yep. yep that takes a longer to digest and and sort of increases our blood sugar levels very slowly so you don't get these big um sort of peaks our high gi and things like our white breads our white rices a lot of our lollies and whatnot that's a quick spike in sugar levels right so so we want more <laughs> low gi but for athletes high gi can have a purpose at certain times. Game days and stuff Game like that. Game yeah. days, you know, the thing about marathon runners, like they're not chewing down a whole meal sandwich, you know, 25K in. They're going to get a gel in. They're going to get some lollies in or whatever it might be, you know, Gatorade, sports drinks, whatnot. So there's different sorts of carbohydrates. It's a really good point. Um, that's a, Yeah, that's that's a really important part because it like I think early days when – me being sort of uneducated on that sense. I was like, I've got to eat brown bread, got to eat this. Mm. But like, no, like there is still value in your, you know, white breads, normal pastas, normal yep. rice, all those bits and pieces, Absolutely. just when you use it. Absolutely. And we'll probably get to this, but I think the main issue in our, um, I guess, Western society and the foods that we eat is that we, that there's like carbs are so important. There is nothing wrong with carbohydrate, no but we do overeat. Uh, as a as a population, we do overeat carbohydrates for now what we do. Yeah. So there are a lot of people that probably don't eat enough for what they do and they're probably the ones that need more, the yeah. active sort of populations. And there's a lot of people that, you know, are quite sedentary with our lifestyles and the convenient food that you get is full of sugar. Um, and so it's probably got more processed carbohydrate than, than what we should have. And so it's not carbs that's the problem, it's the type and the amount that we eat here versus our lifestyle really cool so just on that then just say for example someone trying to put on muscle Mm. more carbs obviously more carbs of what kind or does it depend on when they're doing the activity exactly it depends on when they're doing it yep 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 yep. um but there's often a thought of like gain muscle eat more protein not the case love that yeah um proteins so protein uh, repairs muscles yep 
spot on. What else does it do? Um, so the main function is to repair muscles, tissues, joints, um, and it's not so much about muscle growth. I mean, it has a, a part to play in, in gaining muscle mass, but it's not like you're going to eat protein and gain muscle. You also need a, 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 pro, a training program associated yep. with that. But essentially, every day we get muscle turnover, right? So you think about all the tissues and all the cells you have in your body, protein is a crucial part of that. Protein and carbohydrates have the same amount of calories per gram when you eat them, right? So um, here in Australia, we call it kilojoules. If you look at your nutrition panel, they both have around 16 kilojoules per gram of protein or carbohydrate. But the way that we process those, those macronutrients is very, very different. So you probably can eat sort of more protein and um, or overeat protein I should say and not see sort of the as quick of a a, um, mass gain or fat gain if you're not exercising as such right we store (laughs) carbs as fat a lot easier than what we do protein but if you overeat protein that's left over then you obviously it's still in in the day we store it as adipose tissue interesting so yeah yeah. even if we're not working out exactly right yep, 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 yeah yeah okay. yeah yeah very cool yeah. um while we're on protein i thought it'd be really just a side point before we get to fats talking about creatine because i know mm. there'd be probably a lot of young men and women yep. out there in the gym loving that i know big sean out here he loves the gym and speaks yep. about his creatine yeah i said <clears throat> beyond the creatine stuff as well yeah could you talk to us i don't even remember what it was but it was like storing muscle uh, storing water in the muscle and Yeah, so essentially taking creatine, it helps to increase your muscle creatine levels, right? If you have a meat-based diet, then, you know, a lot of people might already have saturated levels and so therefore it's not actually adding any extra benefit. But what creatine does do is one of the most well-researched safe supplements and it has been marketed as a supplement for... um, gym right for, for, yeah. for mass gain as gym such. junkies gym junkies but that's not always the way so essentially it helps replenish your energy systems so when you're training you use energy yeah. right um it helps replenish that energy your atp cycle quickly yeah. and so essentially you can repeat efforts um more quickly um and as a result of that you can train harder lift heavier, run, like you could probably, do, you know, you can recover from your sprints quicker, whatever that might be. And it's the training stimulus that helps gain the muscle mass, not the creatine itself. There you go. Right. Um, and that it, goes through cycle. You can't use that all the time, right, as well. It's sort of like a cycle. So now that's thing. a myth. That, uh, oh, yeah. So okay. creatine cycling is sort of been not, not showing to, I mean, you can do it no harm, but there's no benefit. We do load creatine at the start if you want the results more quickly. So for five days, Days, you have um, uh, like 20 grams a day for five days and that will saturate levels because you have to have the saturated levels in the muscle to get the benefit and then you just go on a maintenance dose of like one teaspoon five grams a day yep. right it's that loading phase when people say well, if you're on creatine you might gain one or two kilos that's a thing that can happen it's that loading phase that holds water water weight yeah yep. um, but if you don't load it and you just go straight to maintenance phase it will take maybe a month to get saturated but you don't have that same weight game awesome love that that's really cool and i think a lot of people out there that's in the into their gym stuff like i know creatine we use it a, a lot at afl level especially yeah. for guys looking to recover quickly and put on weight and um yeah there's some great results from it but i used it a long time ago and there's already new research that shows so i remember it was like very cycle based and you yep. have to like i was like fuck this is crazy yeah um in terms of proteins mm. as well like mm. supplements yep so like protein shakes um those sorts of bits yep. and pieces. When would you suggest, would you suggest like anyone taking them? Mm. Like would you suggest people in the gym taking Like yep. what do you yeah. – Yeah, it's a really great – so so I guess going back to protein and the amount that, that we need, I honestly um, – I'm a big protein fan, right? We we do eat a lot of protein here because we eat a lot of meat in this country. Um, but we, we eat it in the, um, the wrong times of day really. If you look at our, our patterns, most of our protein comes in at night, 
right? So people might get up in the morning, have some cereal for brekkie, have a ham sandwich for lunch, and then have a massive steak for dinner. So over the day, they're meeting their protein requirements, but like 80% of that's coming in at night. What we now know, and this research, a lot of it is in athletes, but it's beneficial for everybody, especially if you want to lose weight. Number one thing is to spread out your protein intake. We need 20, 30 gram hits of protein from when you get up in the morning to when you go to bed at night four or five times a day. Yeah. Right? So it's like a protein shake or like is that yeah, and like so in, it, obviously food as well. Yeah, yeah, so food should always be number one, mm. always. And you can get that protein hit pretty easily. Um, you know, a can of tuna has about that amount in it, right? So it's not it's not a big amount of protein, mm. but it's really like making sure you're spreading that out. And that's where if you're just someone that's like, I just struggle to get it in or I'm not a breakfast person or whatever, that's where a protein shake yeah. can be really beneficial beneficial right but you know if you go to a supplement store geez the amount of protein shakes that's there it's so it's overwhelming overwhelming. yeah like fucking and so many of them are full of so much shit like Mm. so my advice is if you want to use a protein shake you go for a hundred percent whey whey does not really matter on the brand to be honest unless you're an athlete you need to be batch tested if you're an athlete um if you're not just go for an australian reputable would you suggest any brands like that um i so so the batch tested brands that are australian Australian more so that you can buy off shelf. Masashi, Body Science, True Protein are really yeah. good ones. Um, cool. And they're ones that you can buy off shelf. I buy a organic one. It's like in a cylinder uh, cardboard. Yes, container. I know exactly the one. Is that a raw? Raw, raw. Yeah. yeah. And raw is awesome. For elite athletes, not batch tested, yeah. but for the general population yeah. and again that that's one that wouldn't be flavored right so it depends if you want to add it you can um get flavored ones but they yeah. also come in a natural one so if you want to add it to smoothies and whatnot you yeah. can but if you're someone that just wants to grab a, a you know something in the middle of the day yeah. and a flavored one might be for you but i think protein shakes become uh you know important if you just if it felt from that aspect when athletes you know people say oh if i'm if i'm going to the gym do i need a protein shake straight after the gym well when are you eating next that's the biggest question because if you're going to the gym at five o'clock finish at seven going home and dinner's going to be on the table in 45 minutes you probably don't need a protein shake like because you're about to eat so again it's the spread of protein over the day we used to think we had this 30 minute window you probably when you were playing 100 percent. it was like you had to run, run out of the gym and, and go and drink yeah, the protein yeah yeah complete crap now mm. that's completely been um that yeah saved me some anxiety back in the day <laughs> really... so yeah now it's like as long as you've had that spread over the day and that next sort of hit of protein is not that far after you've trained then it doesn't you don't need to run and yeah you're not gonna fade um it's really it's a really like that's one thing that i've actually really gonna take on board today is trying to spread it yeah. out throughout the day because like on it look i'm not gonna pretend i do this every morning but one thing i'm not a big breakfast eater not like i i know i need to eat in the morning like my body's like you need to eat but i'm yep. not hungry yeah which is really annoying yeah so one thing i always try and do is run out like i do use yo pro and, yep. and just like pay up, smash down one of those yep. tubes because I yep. can just get it down. Pouches, like I'm not yep. doing it for enjoyment. It does <laughs> taste fantastic, but I'm just doing it to just get it yeah, in. Absolutely. A banana, I'll smash that down. Yep. That's pretty easy to eat. And then one thing I am doing at the moment too, I'm very interested in your opinion on this, but I've, um, I'm doing an AG1 um, oh, yeah. satchel in the morning. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of that? Yeah, awesome. How, that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How do you find it? I love it. Yeah. Like placebo, nocebo. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm drinking this stuff in the morning. Darcy hates that saying. I drink this stuff in the morning and I feel like I'm drinking this green thing. <laughs> yeah. It's got all of these yeah. like stuff in it. Yeah. I don't necessarily mm. know what's in it. Like I know it's batch tested. It's like, yep, you know, yep, it's all good, yep, but yep. I feel really good. Yeah. And, and, and I think it comes down to how you feel. There yep. is some really great um, ingredients in there that, you know, it's hard to get just from the general diet. And yep. we do it, you know, at the club of a morning, we've got, you know, a supplement um, um, bench for a yep. better word. Oh, I used to um, hate those <laughs> so much. <laughs> and you come past and you got all your little, I love it. Is it's it great. like you got your number and you've got to like pick? <laughs> well, if, if, I got if, over the number. So okay. now I'm just like, mate, it's there. But you know what the so worst you, part was when it was numbered is like you knew know, if you I hadn't know, had it. I know. So just to fill that in on everyone out there, like you'd walk into the club and you'd have like, well, my clubs, it'll be numbered so they wanted to know who had had it yeah. and if you didn't tr- have it, you were in trouble because you'd walk past and see someone's cup and they were still in there and far out they'd be like, I reckon some say like seven tablets in there, like yeah. fish oil, 
all this stuff. And I'm telling you now, when you don't like breakfast and you're walking in at 7 a.m. <laughs> drinking fish oil in the morning and you're trying to run around, it was like the worst Horrendous. feeling in the world. Yeah, yeah. But it's good for you. It is good yeah. for you. It is. So we've got all that, you know, we've got a green powder um, um, out as well. And, and I think it's a good way to, to get it in. 100%. Again, who knows? Who knows of the benefit? But if there's no harm and potential benefit, all for it. And that's exactly the, my process with the, the AG1 stuff I'm doing. Yeah. It's like, this isn't doing me any damage. No, like, absolutely. if anything, it's like, it's either doing nothing or it's being or great. Helping. Yep. So, absolutely. I feel really good um, yep. on it, which is great. Awesome. So, that's protein. Yep. And if we want to, just to sort of yeah. touch on that as well, from a plant versus non plant <clears throat> proteins, too. So yes, please do. There's so many different sorts of proteins. And obviously, like, vegetarianism, veganism has really, I mean, the, uh, especially in the last few years, there's been a, a, a lot, uh, an increase in numbers, is what I'm trying to say. Yep. Um, and, and I just, it's just important for people to know you can definitely get your protein requirements from a plant based diet. There is absolutely no question. Um, it's just harder. Right? And you just got to know how to do it. Right, it, you just have to think about it. Yeah, more you have to plan it out because um, a lot of vegetarians or vegans, in particular vegans I work with, they, um, you know, again, you get really busy in a day, and before you know it, like you, you, fo- your, your diet's very carb focused, but we're really missing that that protein. And so it's just about thinking, knowing how you do it, what foods you have to mix together, so complementary mm-hmm. protein, so you're getting all of your essential sort of amino acids, which is what proteins are made from. So plant-based often are not don't have all of the amino acids in them so just getting some help probably this is where i would say go see a dietitian yep. and understand what mm-hmm. do i need to put with what to make sure that i'm getting what i need it's it's 100 doable you just need to educate yourself well it was really um great point i'm glad that you brought it up because when i was sort of going through that process of feeling like Fuck, i can't eat meat anymore more mm. just it wasn't so much an ethical thing it's more just i just felt so sick so i just avoided sort of eating it yeah and i remember I just didn't want to tell uh, the dietitian at the club because I just want to avoid this conversation. And I just definitely wasn't doing it correctly. Yeah. And I tore like three calves in the next – and look, they may or may not have been correlated, but they 100% were. Yeah. Because I just was not intaking yeah. any protein and that whatsoever. Recovery piece. The recovery piece. Yeah. yeah it was absolutely. just like I was just eating veggies and rice. Yeah. Like, no, I wasn't sort of having more protein shakes or eating legumes yeah. or whatever those bits and pieces were needed yeah. to sort of do it. You know, chickpeas, all these things that can really um, facilitate good um, protein. Absolutely. What would yeah. you say, um, even just for my curiosity, like, I do eat a lot of tofu. I yep. eat like legumes and chickpeas. Yep. Um, we have a lot of like, you know, high protein yogurts, um, mm. supplement it with other bits and pieces mm. too. Like we've got seeds. Like we have a bird farm at home. Yeah. Like I'm telling you, like we are just seed people. <laughs> like everything I eat, like Jazz will just spread some seeds. I don't even know Love what that. they are. Yeah. Um, but what else would you say is a good vegetarian or pescatarian or just someone that's a plant-based sort of diet yeah, is good yeah. for protein? Yeah. So I guess <clears> the main <throat> things, as you mentioned, that you Falafel, absolutely, and that falafels are made from your legumes more so. So um, that's where so your legumes are going to be huge, which is all of your beans, your chickpeas, um, you know, your lentils, yep. all of that. Tofu, um, tempeh, really, really important. I guess the thing to think about there, like some people don't want to eat overeat soy. There is a little bit around soy and estrogen, mm. and, and with females in particular, and and you know that we probably do need to be a little bit careful in that if you're having you know, three soy um, milk drinks a day plus two lots of tofu, you probably are pushing it there. Really? So That's interesting because my mate does get into me about that a bit. I was drinking soy for ages and yeah. he said that I was going to grow breasts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. That's what he was telling me. You have to have a fair bit, but, yeah. you know, we just have to be a little bit mindful when, yeah. um, in, in that respect um, there. There's, you know, like the um, – oh, and then, then things like quinoa is amazing. So a lot of your grains yep. um, are higher in protein too. If you're not vegan, um, like vegetarians, pescatarians, dairy products, incredible. Yep. Yogurts, yeah, milks, yeah. um, <clears throat> cheese, um, like absolutely fantastic. So you can get all your protein from those sources. Best supplement for – Non-dairy milk, what would you say? Um, so say that again. So best type of milk? Sorry, yeah, best supplement. If you're not if you're not uh, drinking cow's milk, yeah. like the other – like the what other... would you supplement it with yeah. instead of 
Yeah. So I mean, there are so. Is that correct English? I know. I know. So, substitute is the yeah, word I'm yeah, looking yeah, for. Yeah, there. Sorry. Yeah, supplement yeah. substitutes. Yeah. Nah. Nah. That's fine. Glucose, yep. glycogen. It's all the same. You know. You, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So there's so many milks around around now, right? Yeah. So I think what we have to understand is that cow's milk is incredible if mm. you can drink it. A lot of people can't because they're lactose intolerant, dairy allergies, or whatnot. If you're just telling yourself you're lactose intolerant, which a lot of people do, they just oh yeah, I'm lactose intolerant, so you know I'm not going to drink it. You actually, if you if you avoid cow's milk um, or yogurt, you know yogurt from cow's milk, you do actually become more sensitive to it when you try and in, um, increase it again because you downregulate your enzymes that, that break it down. So that's probably why if you haven't had it for a bit, you're probably like oh geez, now I'm you know running to the loo or what. Yeah, and mine's not even around <clears> lactose. <throat> it's just like in the taste. Of the it taste, well. yeah. right? Um, so so for whatever reason, the things around cow's milk. High carbohydrate, high protein. So what we've spoken about, absolute wonder food, especially for athletes. So I use milks a lot and calcium. They're the three things. Calcium. So when we're substituting, all of your milks these days that you can now get, coconut, oat, or almond, or what else is bloody there? Soy. Soy. Jeez, the walnut. I don't know what else they're bringing out. But yep. anyway, um, they are all fortified with calcium, yes. right? So you will get, well, 99% of them off shelf. So you will get the same amount of calcium in a glass of that as you would in cow's milk. So from a calcium point of view, we can tick that off. We're okay. And that's really important because we can get calcium from almonds and green leafy, green leafy veggies, but nowhere near the amount that you can get from dairy. Mm. Um, so important through younger years. Like that's where bone health, is set up in adolescence and that's when I see a lot of young females sort of drop off for a lot of whatever you know a lot of reasons um, in terms of like physical perform like uh, physical or drop off um, sorry I should like drop off dairy intake or oh, drop off dairy right? intake yep. and that set like their bone health you know when they're yeah, 30 they plus are. starts to really especially yep. if they're ath- um, athletic yeah. um, so really really important um, so you can tick that off but all of those other milks bar soy that will give you a little bit of protein will not give you the protein and the carbohydrate. That right? cow's milk will. Oh, yes. So, I mean, there's been a few jokes whether, you know, you call it like a nut juice or uh, a nut water versus a milk because mm. um, it really doesn't have any... I haven't heard that joke, any, but it's, um, quite, it's quite funny. Yeah, because it, it literally it, yeah, is that just makes water, sense. to yeah. be honest, really? <laughs> with some calcium. <laughs> But I mean, I'm si- as I'm sitting here drinking yeah. an oat milk. Yeah, uh, I love oat milk. Oh, it's so yummy. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, that just ensures as well what we're saying for about spreading out that protein throughout uh, the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to have a tuna, again, a tuna for lunch. Great. And then salmon for dinner. And then a yogurt for breakfast. And there you go. Whatever. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. <laughs> just telling you. That's what I'm doing. That's really, really cool because I think. We do make so many choices now, like coffee in Melbourne especially is just like a, it's a religion. And I think we just choose a milk that we think, but not knowing that there's actually no protein in it or something like that. That's yeah. really, yeah. It's, it's important. Mm, mm. Especially for kids as well. Yeah. Like if you choose to ha- have a different milk, absolutely fine. Yeah. But if your kid <clears> can <throat> have lactose, then yeah. give them cow's milk. And that's, <laughs> you know, not even that this matters today, but like with Jaz and I being parents now, we're thinking about, like how to bring up a child, how to bring up a child, well, literally, but also food-wise. And it's like, no, nah, like we want to expose him to uh, cow products and not be, mm. what not our diet, just give him as much possibility as what's best for him yep. and not, yep. you know, make his own decision yeah, what he wants yeah. to do later. Cause, absolutely. Yeah, that's a whole other opinion base that I don't want to yeah. go into. I have no fucking yeah. idea what I'm talking yeah. about there. But I just <laughs> want to, what, I'm, I what I'm basically <laughs> saying is just want to give him the best chance yeah, to yeah. do whatever he, yeah. you know, whatever he wants to eat. Yeah, absolutely. Anywho... Fats. Yeah. Yeah. So fats, I mean, um, you sort of mentioned it earlier around that good fats, bad fats and whatnot, right? Avocado, oils. Yeah. 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 And we call it that just, I guess, based on their structure. So there's unsaturated fats and saturated and and trans fats. So this is sort of our good and our our, our bad. I guess it comes down to the impact it has on heart health as to why it's labelled as that. So our more saturated or our bad fats are the ones that can essentially increase cholesterol levels or the risk factor and can increase heart disease. Yeah. Okay. Blockages of cartilage and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Cartilage? 
Arteries? Arteries. Now, now you made me think. I'm like, cut. No, no. I, I'm just making words up now. Okay, I'm talking too much in this show. I think we need to stop. I'm, I'm just confusing from me I'm just up. really intrigued, and I think everyone's going to be listening to this being like, can you just shut the fuck up and let her talk? I'm really sorry, Dom. Keep going. No, no, it's great. I'm like your hype man right now. Just wanna, sorry, I'm just trying to join in. Go. You go. Uh, um, no, that's great. So, so yeah, so that's what some of the, I guess, bad fats do, whereas the good fats are the ones that increase your good cholesterol right, which is your LDL, so cholesterol is like your high-density or your low-density lipoproteins, that's good and bad cholesterol. Bad fats increase bad cholesterol. Heart disease, good fats increase good cholesterol, protects against heart disease. So that's the two sort of different, that's why they're labelled the way that they are. Um, Saying that, what we have to remember is that whether it's good fat or a bad fat, it's, it is still very energy dense, okay? Not that that's a bad thing, but, you know, it doesn't matter if you're having, you know, butter or oil, it's still giving you um, 37 calorie, um, kilojoules, sorry, per gram. So I said before, protein, carbs, 16, fats, 37. Mm. So that's the difference. So fats are very energy dense, but they do, our good fats, again, do so many wonderful things in our body. Hormonal um, uh, health, it, you know, plays a huge part part in in that um um cell structure um hair skin um you know heart health brain health we learn we know all about our omega-3s um and and the impact on on brain health so you know the good fats have some really um you know important properties in that respect as far as the immediate energy source we you know we're we're not very efficient (coughs) at using fats for energy the same way as carbohydrates and we can store we so uh, we mentioned before about glycogen. That's our carbohydrate storage in our body. So if you eat too much, we store it as glycogen. We can only store that for 24 hours. We only have a 24-hour store. The rest we get we store as fat, right? We have an endless store of adipose tissue. It will just keep growing and growing and growing, Damn right? It. As I'm sure we probably know. So um, it does suck a bit. Yeah. But that's why, you know, if you eat, I guess if you overeat fats, regardless on the source or overeat energy, you will store it as fat in the body, as adipose tissue. Um, But we do need good fats. Um, And before when we spoke about someone that's trying to gain size or gain mass um, and they're struggling, you know, the way my, my, um, I guess, philosophy would be is, okay, tick off the protein that you need, what we spoke about, even amounts, done, tick it off. Increase your carbs, especially around training, done. But you would know this. There's only a certain amount of protein and carbs that you can actually fit in to to mm. your body. Um, and, and there's no way that if you have a big calorie requirement for your goals, you're going to be able to get all of that with protein and carbs. You will be eating 24 hours a day and feeling absolutely disgusting. And that's why we have to use fats because you get a bigger bang for your buck. So, you know, I'd be saying add oil to everything, add extra seeds and nuts and avocado, um, you know, sprinkle cheese on, on things. Like that's how you get a lot more energy coming in and how you can meet some of those energy goals. Fantastic. So cool. With fats, what would you say to someone that avoids, and you just sort of touched on it then, yeah. but avoids them completely? Yeah, like, not, not, not ideal. Is it, it's not really sustainable probably It's as not well. sustainable like, and not, not necessary. Yeah. Like we've learned so much <clears throat> now. And, and again, I think this is the frustrating thing around um, nutrition in that, you know, going back even, oh, it probably would have been maybe like 20 years ago around that point, it was all about the low-fat diet, right? Mm. And all of our food products were low-fat, low-fat, 99% fat-free, blah, blah, blah. And we didn't really care about sugar and everything else they added to it. It was just low-fat. You know, um, a lot of things that had come out around um, cholesterol um, is, um, you know, the, the the way around, like avoid eggs and fats in that respect too. And Whereas now it's completely different and we actually know like you don't need to have low fat to actually lose weight and 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 uh, and be healthy you actually need a certain amount of fats in the diet and i think some of the diets that have come out in more recent times have probably helped to not that i would suggest these diets but just change our thought around that a little bit too i'm talking things like the paleo the keto which is full on around fats and people lose a lot of weight on them so you know if fats are not not the, are not evil. It, mm. it needs to be a part of the plan. And I think we need good fats. We need those um, unsaturated fats in our diet for um, for so many reasons. Mm. Let's get into that um, little part now that you touched on before around... Actually, sorry, before we do, mm. just on the fats, I'd love to just give examples again of like 
saturated fats versus yep. unsaturated yep, fats. Yep, 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 so yep. correct me if I'm wrong, but unsaturated fat is the good fat. Yep. So that's your... Yeah. All I really know they are is avocado and oil. Yep. What else is an avocado, oil, fatty fish? Fatty right? So yeah, it's in like a lot of salmons and yep. stuff like that. Yep. Um, um, nuts, yep. seeds um, are all in that category <laughs> as well. Um, they're probably your main ones. Yep. And then saturated fats. Mm. Is that like your KFCs and stuff like what? Yeah, so KFC. Then you've got your saturated fats. Not just you, I don't mean to call out just KFC. No, no, you know, there's other fast other, food. There's other um, fast foods. Yeah, the fast food. A lot of your fast foods is also has trans fats, which are um, the almost the, the unnatural fats. So got saturated you. fats can still be natural, butter, coconut, whatnot, right? And again, they can have a place. Um, uh, uh, you know, you'd, you'd still want to, you know, oil over butter, in my opinion, olive oil. Like I'm massive on the Mediterranean diet. I think there is just the way to eat full stop have um, you seen um the show about the mediterranean uh, it's about the blue zones yes oh my god i just watched it like last week how good is it i know so I know. my wife's big on that as well yeah, the Medi- huge. yeah can you explain the mediterranean diet after we finish up what you're saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um and so um yeah and so you don't want to again overeat that the natural saturated fats but they're still at the end of the day they're natural like cheese in that category as well but then you've got the unnatural synthetic gotcha. sort of fats and that's things in your fast food that's the trans fats yes is it? Yeah. and that is that is really horrible fats that you know and from a um from a health perspective what we should be avoiding they just don't serve any purpose. No. Yeah, okay. Not at all. And, um, and got, we eat way too much of it. Yeah, it goes without saying too, but like I'm sure there'd be a statistic on this that you'd be well across more than I am, but cardiovascular like disease and mm. heart stuff is like a massive problem for Australia. Absolutely. And the world. Yeah. Well, the Western world anyway. Yeah. So would that come down to a lot of trans fats and is it, that, yeah, yeah, I think it would come down to lifestyle, which includes Sedentary, more fast yeah. food, more convenient food. Like you even got to think like, you know, there's going to fast food outlets and knowing, okay, but then a lot of people think they're eating healthily or trying to and just, you know, because of our lifestyle, eating a lot of convenience, processed food and that, I mean... If for it to be pro- convenient, it has to go through a fair bit mm. of processing, have a fair bit of um, junk in it, really. So, so that and then and then being sedentary, like we just don't move anywhere near the amount that we should. Mm. Really good, uh, not good, but good. Yeah. Um, Mediterranean. <laughs> yeah. Let's, yeah, let's chat about that. Blue yeah. zones as well. If anyone's out there wants to check out this Netflix um, document, uh, it's like a series talks about like the five yeah. blue zones around the world where yeah. people live to the healthiest sort of conditions. I think it's, where is it in Italy? Sardinia. Sardinia, yeah. Yeah, I've been there. It's in, unbelievable. Mm. Mm. Um, so, I mean, the Mediterranean diet, the philosophy is um, more plant-based, um, fish, so not a lot of red meat whatsoever, a lot of legumes, a lot of beans, um, uh, not not processed, so whole foods, um, and un- uh, unsaturated fat, so a huge amount of olive oil. Um, and so, you know, that that's the sort of basics that, that, that um, it, you know, it, I guess it's a diet plan so to speak like it goes into yeah it it is a lifestyle but you know people talk about it the same you know i'm on keto i'm on mediterranean it it, it shouldn't probably be spoken about in that same category because um yeah it it is just the way of life but um there has been so much research about um, the mediterranean diet with chronic disease with longevity um you know it's i think it's the best that you can do Mm. well Mm. it's even the part of it correct me if i'm wrong but like the part I really like about it too is like even we're talking about before about eating out and yep. convenience. It's like eating, cooking the mood, food, preparing it, yep. and eating it around a table with people. Yep. Like that even comes into play with it as well. Oh, absolutely. And I guess that's sort of um, a <clears throat> bit about the Mediterranean culture, yeah. um, which obviously the food that they eat is a part of their culture. But that's why food is so much more than just what we eat. It, it's how it's it's eaten. It's it's the um, you know the norms around it. Um, and I think that that's something that I love about my culture. My background is that you know it's all about family. It's all about preparing and sitting down and show, that's how you show love. And and that's actually how you end up eating probably less because you know you're not just sitting there scoffing it all down. It, it's a part of that um, that sort of yeah that that enjoyment piece. And and the amazing thing about that blue zone is they showed just the important part that having a community around you has on longevity and happiness. And it's unbelievable. The one that um, 
episode that actually like was really cool to watch for me was the Okinawa mm. Japan mm. and I don't know what the diet was as much but it spoke to what you were saying before about community yeah. being involved with people and also activity so I was saying before like we live quite sedentary lifestyles yep. now these like grand people were like 100 years old yep. and they're still in the garden yep. doing like growing their own food gar- on their knees gardening they eat sitting down yep. and it's like I think they were saying in that episode the number one well, number one and two deaths in the US is like cardiac, um, you know, like heart mm, failure yeah. from food, we were talking about before, and then falls. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's you look a part, yeah. So then you look at these guys who are like on the ground eating, they're down on their hands and knees, yeah. gardening, they're still, they go for walks and they do obviously like all their movements yeah, and stuff. It's yeah, bloody it's awesome. crazy. Yeah. And I mean, lucky enough in the last few years to have, you know, visited um, Italy a couple of times and, you know, outside of the main cities, but going to more um, the villages and, yeah. and, like it's a hunt. Like there are old people that just do not stop, you know, and that's the secret. Yeah. We just don't do that here. My uh, Juzza's family's from Hungary. Yes. Yep. And her uh, Nudge, her like nan, yep. she um, is. Oh, she'd have to be in her late eighties. Plays tennis, cooks. Yep. Uh, she has her own veggie garden, cooks all. So Mediterranean yep. diet, exactly yep. that. Um, she does Tai Chi. Yeah. Like she has a community around her. Like it's honestly like lives her best life, yeah. like more engaged than anyone I know. Yeah, and she's a, yeah. absolutely. And I guess I just like as we're sort of talking, I'm thinking there might be people sitting at home just being like, well, you know, what like realistic yep. of, of what their lifestyles are like yep. and being like, well, you know, I've got a young family or a family. I work full time. Both of us work. I, you know, food is the – I need convenience. And I just – I think it's important to know like – of course, ideally, it's to be able to, to cook and, and have veggie gardens at home and eat, you know, uh, farm to plate and whatnot, always ideal. But that's, I mean, I, I can't do that. I'd love to, but that doesn't happen. But there you, there are, there's convenient foods out there, for a better word, that um, that are still not processed, mm. right? And I think that it's just understanding that difference. You know, you can still eat in a, in a convenient way. It doesn't need to be absolutely extravagant dinners or whatever it is. It can be <laughs> simple stuff um, that, you know, that, that's prepared for you. You can go to the supermarket and I know it's more expensive, so that's a whole other uh, discussion, but you can get veggies cut up. You can get salads cut up. You can get things prepared in that way for you and still make healthier choices. I understand it might not be, you know, uh, uh, the pinnacle, but but I think that just know there's always small improvements that you can that you can do that can have a real impact. Yeah. Do, do you share any um, resources around for people like that? Is there anything that's worth knowing to, like, you know, be able to cook healthy meals at home? Because that's even a big part of education too. Like, I know going back to the footy days, like yeah. 18 years old, moving out of home, how the fuck do you even learn how to cook? You know, oh. like all that sort of stuff. And oh, then when you have a family, time. like I'm saying off camera before, talking about her grandma, like I don't even know what the fuck and date is at the moment, let yeah. alone what I'm yeah. eating for lunch. So I'm completely in that boat yeah. and I'm definitely not excusing myself from any of this. No, absolutely. And I think some people, like even the supermarkets are bloody overwhelming. You yeah. know, you get in there and um, I think the big thing, and absolutely, you've got lots of resources and I can, you know, yeah. Like HelloFresh, I know that's, again, it's not the cheap, uh-huh. it's, it's it cheapest thing, but yeah, it is. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, these are the things these days. Our lifestyle is different to what it used to be, right? We're not, we're, we're you know, um, we're not doing what they did in the olden days. Let's yep. be real. Um, uh, but and so we need to adapt, you know, to be able to still look after our bodies. Because really, <laughs> if we don't have our health, then you know, we can't do any things that we wanted that we're doing anyway. Mm. And and so yeah, use these convenient things that are around, Hello Fresh or or, or the likes of that, where you're still actually cooking they're, they're, they're delivering you the yeah. ingredients with the recipe but you're still cooking i think that that's um you know cuts out the the, the shops um that you have to yeah, go to and whatnot eats. but yeah th- all of those things exist which can be really useful i feel like when i cook uh, we do hello fresh on and off as well but when i cook i eat less because you're like yeah in the process i don't know what it is about it and you sort of yeah, they, as they, you go, is that well, yeah, it? that's probably what it is too <laughs> but i think they proportion it out so well yeah, as well do. that yeah. you sort of feel like you eat with your eyes, right? So yep. if you know there's more left, you're just going to keep back going. But if you just empty it, you're Time. like, it's yep. done. Yep. Um, supplements. Did yep. you say, we spoke about protein before and like that, again, that's like my biggest takeaway today already around just spreading mm. that out throughout the day. Would you say that there's any 
I don't know what the word generic, but anything that we should all look at. Like I know iron something that a lot of people are deficient yeah, in. Yeah, yep, um, yep. Would you suggest any supplements without getting, you know, the, your own test done? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, so so something like iron I think would only be if you're deficient. <clears throat> um, and and so, you know, if you're vegan or vegetarian or even pescatarian, um, then it would be a matter of just getting that done, you know, every three to six months and keeping an eye on those levels. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be recommending that. I think probiotics is just a non-negotiable. Mm. I think, every, you know, we all can benefit. We, we are learning, talk about nutrition science and de- the development. We are learning so much about the microbiome that I think that, that is going to be the next massive thing and yeah. just how important gut health is to everything. Is this like your kefir and stuff like that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, absolutely. Um, and that's essentially you're what cooked? your probiotic. Yep, that's what probiotics are. Okay. Um, there are some supplements out there. I would always say, um, you know, use a refrigerated um, uh, capsule more so that has yep. a, a range of different um, uh, strands in cool. it. And um, just to, I think that can have real benefit. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and I guess the other things is your fish oils um, and curcumin if you've heard of curcumin which is an active in, active ingredient in turmeric mm. um you know i i guess i come from more of that athletic lens but it, these are the ones that are for general health yep. can have real um benefit from a inflammation perspective um yep. so th- and, and you know what we know about um fish oil and omega-3 especially if you're not someone that gets a lot of that that fish in um you know just the the impact on brain health um you know and especially as we as we age as well so important so i'd say they would be the three like ones that I would just for for, for general health that are my, my big ones. There are so many so, others, yeah. but um, but they're big ones. We give uh, Max, uh, my son, uh, fish oil. Yeah, and like we give him a few different like we spray something else in his mouth. It might be D twelve or something. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know yep. what it is, but it's good. Yeah, and the fish oil like it fucking smells so bad, but yeah. like it's just so good for oh, f- so good for them. Absolutely. And uh, sorry, I just said that vitamin D. I'm a big fan of vitamin D. Is that D twelve? Yeah. Is that what yeah. that is? Yeah. yeah, that's the version of it. Yeah. Um. So you know we we just don't, especially being in Victoria, I think through winter, especially if you're active, um, you know, dosing up on a vitamin D like a thousand IU a day, um, is just a really good baseline to get in because awesome. it's very hard to get it from food. Two questions because I love takeaways here and don't stress if there's nowhere in, like people can do their own research. But is there anywhere someone can go to talk? Like, is it like a um, – there's a place in Fitzroy called something. It's a shopping centre across the road from Peter Mo- Wild Things. Oh, yeah. And in Wild Things they have like a – it's a very organic sort of supermarket. Yep. But then they have a – Naturopath? I was going to say naturopath. But yep. I wasn't sure if that was the right sort of yep. word. And it has like all these things you can go and sort of talk to people about what yep. you want. Yeah. So there's that place. Would you suggest any other places? And also on the probiotic, I know people are going to ask, would you suggest a certain type or does it depend on maybe talking to someone? Yeah. Um, by type, do you mean like brand Brands, yeah. Brands. Yeah. Or, yeah. So as far as going to speak to, to someone, I think you just have to be a little bit mindful of going. I love the natural stores and, yep. and I love natural pass, right? But it's just a bit of a different philosophy, For sure. I guess. And so um, sometimes you'll walk away with so many things and think, gee, and, and a lot of it might be herbal based and whatnot. Oh, yeah. They see me coming. They, they see me right. coming from a yeah. away. And, and I think it can potentially have benefit, not overly evidence-based i think if you're just wanting to know okay how do i eat better for myself and what supplements might i need for my own situation if you're gonna like it might be worth um speaking to a dietitian you know you might just need from my perspective i think one (coughs) session with a dietitian you don't need to go it doesn't need to be this ongoing oh now i've signed up for that's not how dietitians work you know they they operate they work operate out of doctors um offices and whatnot that might be something to, to consider or at least um you know have a chat to these sort of places, but maybe just go away, have absorb it, and then think about do your own research yep. in that way. Love that. Um, as far as the supplements go, so I guess um, you know I don't want to um, sway anyone either way, but um, I think there are a couple of practitioner only supplement um, companies which are. Oh, they are shit all over the things you can get off shelf, right? Mm-hmm. So there's. Um, 
uh, bioconcepts and bioceuticals as the two. Bioconcepts, um, bioceuticals. Right? Now, I'll, I'll put my hand up and say bioconcepts, I work with them, so I think they're awesome. But yep. um, but bioceuticals is, is another similar product. Um, these You but, wouldn't work with them if you didn't believe in right? them. Right. Oh, exactly. absolutely. Well, they are the, the quality and the evidence behind it. You know, when you go and buy just a one-off shelf, you don't actually know how much of that active ingredient is it. There's a lot of fillers in there. It's very commercial. Supplements should be like medication. Right, I mean, there and, and so it needs you need to make sure that where it's coming from is actually um, um, really high quality. So they're two practitioner only ones, and you can either, um, you know, they do stock in chemists behind the pharmacist of the pharmacy, um, pharmacist, yeah, so you know what I'm trying to say, behind counter, yes. they'll stock those supplements so you have to go ask for them or if you see a practitioner, a, a doctor or a dietitian, then they can prescribe. Love that. But again, listen to this, do your own research, yep. check it all out. We always say that. Um, do we? I'm not sure. Uh, listen to questions. This is my uh, favourite part. I know I've been incredibly uh, generous with your time. I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, Dylan Buckley, actually, that was. I said, what are some foods that nobody – what are some healthy foods for us that nobody knows? Like, is there any foods out there that, like, just they're, – they're sleepers? They get slept on? Like, that is so good that – and everyone's like, why aren't you buying these? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. I think, to be honest, it probably comes down to that gut health piece around things like kombucha um, and kefir. Like, it, we don't have enough of those products. We need to do another episode on gut health because I've oh. heard so much about it and I don't know anything about it. Oh, it's it. enormous. It's, okay. yeah, Let's do that. It's a whole other episode. I would love to do that. Yep, yep. I think, though, that that, that would be the thing that comes to my mind. And, and, you know, when we talk about superfoods, there's no such thing as superfoods, yep. to be honest. Um, but, um, but, but you know, they probably sit in that sort of category. Um, and I think that, yeah, that, that's they're awesome. Cool. Purely from a gut health perspective. Love that. And I really would love to do an episode on gut health because I, I genuinely – Teach me, please. Um, it's Nicole Tax. Do you have any suggestions of effective ways to implement nutritious foods when you don't have time? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess this is what we've we've spoken about. Um, again, <laughs> I think just remember you don't. It doesn't need. You don't need to make uh, extravagant meals to be nutritious. So um, I think um, focus on the main things. Okay, in my day, I need some regular hits of protein. I need some good carbohydrates. I need some greens or colour in there um, and a bit of good fat. That can be as simple as like my lunch, like bloody go to Coles or Woolies or something if I'm running out of time, get a, a salad bowl, grab a can of tuna and get an avocado. I mean, you don't. we don't need to think too much about mm. it, but I think – the 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 key is to be well as well planned as you can and i think that where people fall into um trouble is when you are so busy you get to work and it's like oh i haven't got lunch oh, i'll just go buy something oh and it's been a big day do i feel like a, a you know a Good salad thing. or a, a yeah. nice healthy wrap now nah, just go and like you know get that burger or get whatever um and so being well planned is really important but don't overthink it right i think like when people say oh, i can't eat this i'm not telling you to eat the same thing every day when people say oh, you know i just need variety i get bored and you know what? You can't have everything, right? So, like, there's nothing wrong with just eating simple foods. If you save your extravagant cooking, make it something on the weekend, you know, make weekends a bit more enjoyable. If you don't put too much pressure on yourself to have to always make them, you know, it just um, make it simple. Love that. TJ Waitman24 said, what are some of the best pre-game liquids or caffeine strips to get going? Oh, yep. Yep. Um, so Plus I guess that pre-workouts more so yeah. um, is where that's coming from. So um, the thing about with those things is that you want to make sure you're actually getting the caffeine in there. That you, well, well, firstly, let me say one step back. You have to be used to caffeine. Yeah. Right? Don't think like, oh, I don't drink coffee, but um, I feel like I'm, I need some energy. I'll just go to a pre-workout or a caffeine because you'll just get jittery and, you know, whatnot. So you want to make sure you're actually used to some sort of caffeine. Um, the recommendations say that, you know, we should be one to three milligrams of caffeine per kilo about half an hour to an hour before training, right? So think of it, if you weigh 80 kilos, one to three milligrams of that. So you probably are looking, you know, at around about that 100 milligram mark is where most of the caffeine strips and gels sit at, mm-hmm. okay? Um, 
Pre-workouts can range between 100 milligrams to 350 milligrams. So you really have to be really careful about, you know, how much you're getting. Just for context, a, a cup of coffee, if you're buying it from the shop, will probably have around anywhere between 80 to 100 milligrams and instant is probably around 50, right? Mm-hmm. So... A pre-workout that you could buy, and, and you know, for full disclosure, we use Masashi um, products. I really like Masashi, and they're batch tested. At Richmond? Yeah. And they're batch tested, which is really important. I, I use their pre-workout personally. I quite like it. Very similar to others on the market, but that, it's got 250 milligrams of caffeine. Nice. That's two and a half cups of espresso coffee. Okay, so you just need to make sure that you get that amount right for you. But for performance, it's one to three milligrams per kilo. If you haven't tried it, I'd say aim for, you know, no more than 100 milligrams in your dose. Great advice. There's so much we could talk about with that as well. Because I remember playing footy, there's like the whole ruling around now with Asada and stuff around yes. too much. And yep. not that we want to get into that because it's very boring. Um <laughs> Rick Palumbo said, what are, what do you think is the best snack to have on the go traveling between work and the gym? Yeah. Um, oh, I think um, like the yogurts are awesome. So, so if, if you, you got to think, what's my purpose? If I'm going to the gym, you need some carbohydrate, right? Yep. For that sort of <clears throat> um, time, if you don't get in heaps of protein, that's okay. The focus is getting some carbs so you can actually make the most out of your gym session. So so what could that be? You know, yogurts are fantastic with a piece of fruit and, you know, a handful of nuts. Great snack there. If you're leaving work and you can grab, grab like a smoothie or something before you – depending on what you've got at work. I'm, I sort of think about footy clubs. I'm sure most places don't have just smoothie stations everywhere. But yeah, you no, know. Uh, <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> not, not this one anyway. Uh, um, you've made it the- sound like every club just has a smoothie machine machine on like every corner of the building which I don't know I've never been to well, Richmond yeah. so I don't, I don't know not on every corner yeah. um, I reckon they are pretty lucky though hopefully yeah. they understand that um, yeah. no but then um, you know even like a, a wrap or something like you know a wholemeal wrap with some you know peanut butter or, or a slice of cheese in there nothing that's going to make you feel overly stuffed so you can't get the most out of your training mm. but but enough to give you that carbohydrate hit great that's a really great answer. And um, last one from at Taj O'Hayon, who's a big fan. He always sends in questions. I really appreciate it, Taj. Uh, looking for some advice around carb loading. Mm. How do I effectively use low GI and high GI carbs in that process? Does mm. GI even matter when carb loading? Mm. How many hours or days out from an event or race should I start my carb load? Very educated question. <laughs> yeah. That's a... um, and we could talk about this for another two hours. No, so, so in simple terms... Carb loading, by definition, um, is when you have 10 to 12 grams per kilo of carbs a day yep. in the lead up to an event. Just so again, even to break that down for someone who's never heard yep. of carb loading, I'll try. Yep. Is, you know what? You do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's when Basically, you, trying to get as much carbs in right. before a big activity that yep. you've got to Because do. The, defini- the, the, the purpose is, now you know how I said that we store a 24-hour supply of glycogen, yep. right? I think it's glycogen, but yeah. Yeah, glycogen, yep. yeah. Um, that one. Um, the, the, the aim of carb loading is if you do it right together with a taper, yep. right, you can almost supersede that. So you can store more glycogen than what? you is normal i guess right um and the reason you want to do that is because we use carbs for energy and endurance events you're going to run out of glycogen full stop you run out of it before you get to the end of the event which is why you you have um nutrition in the middle of the race so you don't completely bonk out so we want to carb load to essentially get as much glycogen in storage as we can yep the definition of that as i said huge amount of carbs think about how much you weigh for simple terms times it by 10 Right, someone that uh, that weighs eighty kilos, that's eight hundred grams of carbs. A piece of bread has twenty grams for context. Right, so you can think about just how much it's carb, a lot. an enormous amount, an enormous amount of carbs. What we now know, research-wise, you probably need to do that for around two days out of an event, two or three days with a complete taper to get that that, that increase in glycogen. Right, it's bloody hard to do really hard to do, especially if your your gut isn't trained for it as well. Um, great question around the low high GI. There is no possible way you can do that with low GI foods, right? You need to include high GI. So on a proper carb load, it would be having juices, having, you know, um, more sugary foods, jam on things, honey everywhere to, to be able to get more carbs mm. in. Because if you're just trying to do it with rice and bread, it's gonna be, you're, it's you're a not going to be, yeah, right. 
right? So um, so that that's what we do. And, and it's not for everyone and you might not need to do it. That, if you're running a marathon or an endurance athlete, you definitely need some nutrition advice 100% to work out what's going to work for you. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I obviously work a lot in team sport. More so, and they'll say like, "Oh, you know, I'm carb loading for for the game." And you're you're absolutely not. You're just eating a plate plate of pasta, really. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what it is. I'm eating a plate of pasta before the game tomorrow. I'm carb loading. Not even close to. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't need to carb load because we're playing football, so you don't need to. But um, but just it's very funny. Oh, there's so many myths that we could go through and debunk, which I probably still follow myself. Um, so funny, Dom. I've taken up so much of your time. Um, I'm not just saying this, but genuinely, really appreciate it. That was so insightful. Um, I'm going to lock you in on mic so that you can't get out of it again. But would love to get you back in and do some gut health stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And just be a resident doctor of life yeah. you're fantastic <laughs> I might really stop at nutrition but yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah maybe nutrition yeah but um, I'm just uh, yeah would love to thank you again and thank you so much for, for, for coming in for your time Lots of fun. I, I, I really learn a lot today and I'm going to go smack a couple of proteins in there just to, to get going um, which is really cool but I really want to do more episodes with you um, make sure you go and check out doctor underscore dom underscore condo we'll be putting up all our reels and stuff as well guys go follow dom and, um, and learn more about it. I hope you really enjoyed the episode. I know I did, and thank you again. Thank you.